I only have three actual loves in this world. The first is coming home from a Sunday afternoon in the pub to something that's been in an oven for six hours. The second is obviously Becky Lynch, but the third is making list videos about wrestlers in movies. I'm not even kidding, they're my actual favourite. Now, normally we go really big in these things and look at the best moments, the worst castings, things like that, but this time we're pushing the realms of reality to show you the most implausible cinematic situations any wrestler has ever found themselves in. And no, Buff Bagwell's porn film is not in this video. My name is Adam Cleary and these these are 10 wrestlers who took on movie roles you won't believe. Number 10. Lou Albano, the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Going to get this one out of the way nice and early because the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that this is not in fact a movie. Yes, I'm very aware what the title is because I literally just said it with my mouth, but one, this is too interesting not to include on a technicality, and two, say it with me now friends, it's my fuck list. I will do that on a t-shirt one day, mark my words. Anyway, yes, it's not a movie, but Captain Lou Albano voiced the world's most famous plumber Mario Mario himself in the Nintendo Super Mario Bros. Super Show TV series. Yes, here he is, doing exactly that. He might have looked the part, yes, but his voice was far more Bowser than Mario, and watching him rap and dance to Do The Mario was just disturbing. Do the Mario! Swing your arms from side to side! The show ran for 52 episodes for the second half of 1980 and included live action segments in which the Super Mario Brothers, played by Albano and Danny Wells, would welcome celebrity guests. Celebrity guests like Patrick Dempsey, Sergeant Slaughter, David Horowitz, and Frank Zappa's eldest daughter, Moon Unit. Number 9, Kevin Nash, The Punisher. The Tom Jane version of Marvel's most famous vigilante is a weird, 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 weird film. I mean, I still really liked it, but then again, I like jewels, so what do I know? Much like my shiny-headed pal, though, the film is absolutely all over the shop, but does still have its moments of genius. None more so than the comically brief cameo from Quadricep spokesman Kevin Nash, seen here dressed as that Bluto knob from Popeye. History's monster John Travolta, not wanting to get his hands dirty in the situation, calls upon the services of The Russian, who is played wordlessly, I might add, by Nash. Sadly, the big lad only appears in this one scene, but the fight that ensues is actually pretty good. We get all the greatest hits of Big Guy with a small part, including the complete no-sell shot, the classical music soundtrack, and nobody else apparently hearing the fight going on. Amazingly though, this isn't even the weirdest Kevin Nash entry on this video, so yes, steal yourself. Number 8, Shad Gaspard, Black Panther. He might not be the most famous name in wrestling currently, but former WWE star Shad Gaspard, yes, him from Crime Time, played a key but understated role in Marvel Studios' ridiculously popular Black Panther. JTG's former best pal and underwear thief turned up for an uncredited role, standing in for fan favourite Winston Duke, who himself was playing M'Baku. The rising star took away considerable plaudits for his performance as the head of the Gorilla Tribe, but he had to rely on Gaspard for his combat work when his character fought T'Challa. If you don't think I'm planning some sort of weird WWE Marvel crossover video, you're an idiot. Number 7, Sting, The Encounter. For anybody familiar with Sting's personal story, the revelation that his career has seen him spreading the word of God as much as taking bumps shouldn't be too much of a surprise. The born-again Christian turned to religion in 1998 to steer his life away from a cycle of drug abuse. He became heavily involved in the church for years before returning to wrestling with TNA. Without context, you'd expect Sting to have starred in the kind of roles that wrestlers seem to naturally gravitate towards. Tired muscles, strong silent guns, one-dimensional heroes, you know, your atypical WWE Studios outing. So seeing him turn up in an overtly Christian movie, albeit as a sort of anti-hero, where he literally meets Jesus working in a cafe, comes off as a little bit of a shock. Especially since he still looks like the same bodybuilder brute who appeared in three episodes of Thunder in Paradise. Number 6. Kurt Angle, Pain and Gain. When Michael Bay was looking for someone to play a tiny combat role for The Rock's Pain and Gain movie, Kurt Angle happily accepted the call, presumably because he enjoyed their feud at No Mercy so much. Angle actually had it in his head to become an actor when his reduced wrestling schedule made some space for it, but his dalliances were mostly limited to wrestlers versus zombies and, um, Sharknado 2. Those two were admittedly big roles though, so you wonder why he agreed to something this small. He literally just plays a prison thug who gets beaten up in a wordless flash 
flashback by The Rock. It ends up looking like an Easter egg reference to Johnson's past, but still, that total no-sell for getting that weight plate in the face is brilliant. Number five, Scott Hall, Big Money Rustlers. When they weren't making novel but violent rap albums or backyard wrestling or somehow failing to dropkick Fred Durst despite getting within a few inches of him, Insane Clown Posse also made films. Actually, no, sorry, I can't, I can't let this go. How does he manage to miss? He gets close enough to brush him with his foot during the jump, but then just doesn't connect with the kick. I don't understand, is this a word? Anyway, their one major crack at cinema came in 2010 when they made bizarre western big money rustlers. No, I know, you've never seen it, I've never seen it, nobody has ever seen it. It aims to be blazing saddles, but its idea of humour is naming characters things like Dusty Poot, Raw Stank, and Dirty Sanchez. In amongst the film's many weird cameos, I mean, here's Ron Jeremy. And I wanted money. Here's Dustin Diamond, for example, Scott Hall turns up playing Mexican Sign Guy, who has three lines, including a joke about shagging some dead guy's wife. You see now, don't you, why these are my favourite lists? Number four, The Big Show. MacGruber. Oh, right, so not to be that guy, but there's absolutely no reason for homophobia to be the entire punchline of a joke in this century, even if it is in a ridiculous spoof film like MacGruber. The comedy actually includes cameos by several former WWE stars, with Chris Jericho, Mark Henry, The Great Carly, MVP, and Kane all forming the titular character's gang. But in the teaming up sequence, WWE's Big Show also appears as another heavyweight who is immediately discounted, despite his size, because he's gay. Nice. But hey, I suppose if you ever wanted to see the big show make out with a guy, then there's that. Number three. Jeff Jarrett, Spring Breakers. Haha, <laughs> he is a nice wholesome one. In 2012, Jeff Jarrett put his own considerable charisma to good use by turning up as a Christian youth group leader. And inevitably, since this was the crazy upside down world of Spring Breakers, he looked like he was an extra out of Sons of Anarchy. Even more randomly, the part was supposed to be played by Val Kilmer, who had to drop out due to illness. Quite how anybody made the leap from Kilmer to Jarrett for an evangelist remains unconfirmed, but it's not the sort of character anybody famous with old slap nuts would have picked out for him. Number two, Rey Mysterio, Freddy vs. Jason. Here's a fun game for regular watch culture viewers. Nine times out of ten when we've got a list, it's usually because we came across one really good fact and were convinced we could get a list out of it. So, next time you're watching a video, try and guess which one entry spawned the whole thing. I'll give you this one for free, it's that Rey Mysterio ended up playing horror movie icon Freddy Krueger for 2003's Freddy vs. Jason. Yeah, he might not have the usual size associated with actors playing movie monsters, but he has one of the most famous on his CV. Nobody's quite sure how he got the gig, but it did at least mean he followed in the footsteps of his uncle, Rey Mysterio, who played Killer Luchador El Mascarado in WrestleManiac. All of that I've just said is somehow true. You won't have seen his face as Freddy, not that you usually see it anyway, because he was hired to play Robert Englund's stunt double in the Boiler Room Dream sequence, despite him and Englund looking nothing alike. Number one, Kevin Nash. Magic Mike. When you come with a nickname like Big Sexy, you have a certain rep to protect, and Kevin Nash did just that with two of the most unexpected movie appearances ever. Nash has history in cinema, of course. He played the Super Shredder in the second Turtles movie, played a steroid-popping prison guard in The Longest Yard, and made an appearance as a villain in The Punisher. Yet, despite having no dance skills and all the mobility of a particularly stubborn static caravan, he also got a starring role in the Magic Mike films as veteran stripper Tarzan. Now, if you've seen them, and don't pretend you haven't, Nash is so, so out of place with the other, younger, more gyrating members of the cast that it's actually slightly painful to watch. However, since it's released, the amount of people clamouring for a Diesel comeback has fallen to precisely none. Every cloud. So yes, that's our list, but given how wrestlers will take any movie part that so much as looks at them twice, we've no doubt left some out, so shout them out in the comments below, and of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Follow what culture on Twitter here, follow myself on Twitter here, but in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I have, of course, been Adam Cleary, and I will see you soon. Bye. <laughs>